the great apes are legally property. So we own them, we can buy them and sell them. Certainly, you know, legally we can lock them up in pretty horrific conditions. And indeed, legally, there's nothing to stop you killing them either if you don't want to keep them anymore. At the moment, we have this really, when you think about it, quite absurd dichotomy between human beings who are persons and everything else, uh, all other animals, all other sentient beings, um, including the great apes, that are just things really at law. They can be owned, they can be disposed of, they're just property. The difference between property and, and uh, personhood is basically this. Uh, if you're property, you don't have any legal rights at all. You're, you're essentially invisible to the civil law system. Uh, if you're a person, you have at least one legal right that the legal system recognizes in, in some way. Um, sometimes people uh, think that when I talk about getting basic legal rights for non-human animals, I'm, 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 I'm talking about giving non-human animals human rights. But I'm really not. I'm just talking about giving basic rights to them the way we've given basic, basic rights to, to humans. The entire argument I make is that fundamental rights, by definition, don't have anything to do with species at all, whether it's, it's, it's human or any other species. The Declaration on Great Apes is a document that sets out the case very succinctly for giving the great apes basic rights, for admitting them to what uh, Paolo Cavalieri and I have called the community of equals, that is the beings who we think have some sort of fundamental moral equality that means they should not be treated in certain ways. Anti-cruelty laws don't work. Anti-cruelty laws are generally laws which say that you can't inflict unnecessary suffering on animals and you've got to treat animals humanely. So the question becomes now, how are courts to determine what necessary suffering is? Generally what happens is, is you're talking about a conflict between a property owner and a piece of property. And you say, well, we've got to balance the interests of these two entities. That's a rather bizarre thing to even think about conceptually. Animals are commodities. The fact that there are some chimpanzees that have more mental capabilities than, than some human beings, I think, is neither here nor there. We still have these fundamental differences, uh, which it seems to me defy the game. And in fact, all the defenders of the grape apes, they don't say you only defend the smart ones and you don't let the dumb ones get any kind of rights. They're insistent that the category is equivalent to human beings. And I think, in fact, if you concede that speciesism is an epithet that holds, the whole game is over. Uh, the implications, I think, are disastrous. So I'm just willing to fight them on the beaches and refuse to say that that's a legitimate kind of argument. People are living in this delusional world uh, that that's, uh, appeals to uh, our narcissism that puts man on top and then you have all these defective brutes. When in reality, rather than being a scale like this, it's horizontal. And that's what Darwin says. And so we have differences, but one really isn't better than the other. We're all very good for, for where we are. I'm the 
Michelle Vitale and I'm a filmmaker in Seattle, Washington. In 1996, I came across a book called The Grade A Project, which is a book that proposes a radical idea to grant three basic rights to grade eights in an effort to give them meaningful protection. This book had a huge effect on me and became the basis for this documentary. You may have heard that this idea is already working its way into the court system. So what this film will do is offer a sort of window into the thinking behind rights for animals. If you'd like more information about the amazing group of people we had the opportunity to interview or details about what this film will cover, you can find all that information and more below on our Kickstarter page. I hope some of these ideas resonate with you, and if they do, please check out our rewards. I funded the production phase, and now I'm turning to you to help uh, finish up post-production. The money that we raise will be used to pay for an editor, and we have some really um, great music and graphics planned. There's licensing fees, and uh, I also need to update the film's website. Any amount you're able to contribute will go a long way in helping to get this film made. If you're new to Kickstarter, it's important to know that the money you pledge won't be collected until I reach my funding goal. So what this means is, I won't receive any of the money that's pledged unless I reach my funding goal by the posted deadline. Another way you can help is to please share this link with your friends. Any way you're able to help, I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you.